So I'm Bill, and welcome to episode seven of Nerd Stocking. Uh, with me tonight is Chad and Ross. Hi, I'm Chad. And I'm Ross. <laughs> Chad, Got something uh, caught in your throat there, Chad. <laughs> yeah, I think your underwear is on a little too tight there, Chad. Yeah, those underoos. <laughs> <laughs> underoos! Those Wonder Woman underoos are on a little... Uh, yeah, Chad's not here right now. He's uh, being We just heard him. Late. Sorry, that was the your, illusion. It's your... Yeah. It was a pretty accurate imitation <laughs> that you just did of him. Yeah. And uh, tonight we are indeed journeying into the Twilight Zone, which for my money is the greatest television show ever made. I don't know. Would you think that's too grandiose of a term, Ross? I don't think it's too grandiose a term. I wouldn't apply it to the Twilight Zone only because I think uh, what got to me first was Star Trek. So Star Mm. Trek is my greatest fan. Well, uh, most uh, loved TV show of all time. But there, be, is, could there be is so overlaps yeah. in the creative personnel, so we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll definitely get to that because there is. It was created by Rod Serling, of course, who was, um, he had a pretty, you know, he was pretty famous before he did The Twilight Zone as a writer for television. That's he right. had written, uh, they'd air on stuff like, you know, Playhouse cra- Yeah, yeah exact craft, craft showcase dinner theater, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. With real cheese slices, yeah. <laughs> craft dinner theater, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he had written, uh, uh, he uh, Patterns was one of them. He, he wrote um, Requiem for a Heavyweight, I think it was another one that yeah. he had written. Yeah. And, uh, and he had gotten a name for himself as a writer on television, but the problem that Serling was facing is He's a contemporary writer, so he wants to deal with subjects that are affecting society at the time, like racism and uh, inequality, you know, and drugs, and any number of things. But every time he tried to put that into uh, something he was creating, he'd get blowback from the either the sponsors or the censors. Sure. Right? Yeah. This was the era of Leave It to Beaver. Yeah, you know you, the worst <laughs> exactly. thing that could happen is you got your new pants wet or you know muddy yeah. playing. I mean, they did not want to go anywhere near social. Conflict. Right. Well, that's the funny thing you mentioned that because uh, the one I always think about when I think of those days is uh, how on I Love Lucy when she was <laughs> pregnant, she couldn't say that she was pregnant. No, she had the only could say that she's expecting. Yeah, yeah. They and you know, Dick Van Dyke and Mary Tyler Moore had separate beds. Right. I did Lucy and Desi. Yeah, it, right. was, a, it was a very odd time right. uh, in the late 50s to be, a, to be a writer. And to try and get that kind of social commentary would have been right. impossible. Right. So Serling's idea is to um, couch all that in, the, in terms of the supernatural or fantasy or science fiction. And uh, by doing that, he could make very germane, pointed comments on society. But, you know, it's aliens. Right. And you know, it's the aliens that are being racist. Five, or, six years later, maybe Gene Roddenberry was inspired by that. Yeah. He did the same thing with Star Trek. That's true. The minute you put it into a science fiction construct, right? The network censors, their brain disengages and they just say, Oh, well, this is nothing to do with Vietnam. That's fine. Let's just right. put it on air. <laughs> right. Meanwhile, right. it's called a taste of Armageddon yeah. episode, but you know, it's not working. Yeah. No Meanwhile, one's saying Vietnam. They've slipped in a whole bunch of stuff that it got yeah. by. So, yeah, that's a good point. I wonder yeah. if Roddenberry. In the research I had done, I hadn't I made haven't made that connection that they sort of knew each other or had worked together. I've read a lot about the history of the like uh, uh, Roddenberry had done the Lieutenant right just before Star Trek, but yeah. he'd written a lot of westerns and police procedurals before that. He'd actually also same similar to Sterling yeah. had made a name for himself as a uh, not a contemporary writer, but as a uh, uh, fast and efficient writer, mostly with westerns, which were you know very popular, but. Right, yeah, I don't. I don't uh, think they they had any overlap, but yeah. the creative teams, the writers were. Similar. Oh yeah, Robert sure, Block and Richard yeah. Matheson and, and uh, George Clayton Johnson. George I think, Clayton Johnson. I think yeah. he wrote. Well, he wrote uh, "Where No Man Has Gone Before." Yeah, I'm just wondering if he wrote any Twilight Zone. I think he has. I think he's in there. Well, they were all of they were all of a bunch, and uh, you know what Roddenberry wanted to do is bring in um, science fiction writers. He didn't want to just get television writers. He wanted science fiction writers, which right. Serling also. Yeah. So. Yeah. Exactly. So Serling created the show where he, he was able to make those kind of pointed comments uh, in a genre show, and it ran for five seasons on CBS from 1959 to 